Well, one thing we start increasingly think about is uh, what rice farming is going to look like, you know, not just five years from now, but 10, 15, 20 years from now. You think about, you know, young people moving to the cities, not really wanting to become rice farmers, you know, aging farmers that are currently out there, so less labor, maybe even less water, um, anything you know, that currently is part of the traditional way of growing rice with uh, you know, wet land preparation and puddled soil and manual transplanting and harvest. You look ahead, 20 years from now, probably in many places of Asia will be difficult to continue that way of growing rice. So, so what are we going to do about that? Because that's the question that we're asking in our research increasingly also from a crop management point of view. But even for the breeding point of view, because uh, anything we change in the current traditional system of rice farming needs to have integrated solutions to work with. Yeah, yeah I think you're, you're absolutely right. There's no question that the drudgery of transplanting every single rice plant that a farmer harvests is just not going to be the way people want to make their living uh, in the very near future. I think that. The manually transplanted uh, rice crop is very rapidly going to be a thing of the past. And I think there's no question that, that institutions like ours are going to be the have, have to be the ones who can make sure that this system of, of puddling the soil, transplanting the rice, which is or has been unbelievably sustainable, can withstand that transition to a direct seeded crop using much less labor and still retain its sustainability. And I think there's some fundamental research program or problems uh, within that kind of uh, challenge. Yeah, it's, it's not easy to grow rice that way. I mean, what we see here right now in yeah. front of us is, is a, what we call a dry, direct seeded rice. So with a machine drilled into the dry soil, mm -hmm. like you would you know, drill a seed a wheat crop or something like that. And then of course, uh, uh, it's much more problematic in the sense that uh, managing weeds or controlling weeds yeah. is not easy yeah. because you don't have early on a standing water layer. You need to take more care of your nutrient management. Uh, we may need uh, varieties which are better adapted to that kind of uh, yeah. dry seeding and emerge quickly and have a lot of early vigor. Yeah. So lots of things, uh, but I think uh, We've made good progress uh, also in big new regional initiatives like the Serial Systems Initiative for South Asia where with partner on the ground, uh, particularly in 2011, we've had hundreds and hundreds of demonstrations of dry seeded rice and associated uh, technologies with reduced tillage and even no-till situations that increasingly look actually promising. Yeah. We're making progress, we're getting good yields, still a few things to improve, but uh, I think uh, it's really showing what's possible there. Yeah, you hit on something I think that's that's critical to this, this these kinds of transformations. And you mentioned the, the uh, Serial Systems Initiative for South Asia as a major initiative. Another major initiative, of course, is the Global Rice Science Partnership, or GRISP. And uh, in that partnership, we bring in Latin America. And in Latin America, they have successfully developed an entire rice industry on a direct seeded approach. Highly mechanized, large expanses of, uh, of uh, area, uh, very low labor, uh, very high input in terms of energy and mechanization. And so I think through the GRISP, we have an opportunity to, to learn some of the underlying processes that make the Latin American systems work recognizing that the land tenure, population density, uh, water situation of Asia, for example, is very different. So what can we learn from a direct seed of experiments in Latin America, bring to Asia and adapt? And then, of course, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, which has low population densities, lots of, 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 uh, of land, but much lower level of technification and infrastructure, can learn probably from both Latin America and Asia. No, no, absolutely. That, and that has been fantastic in 2011. We had GRISP now as the first real new CGIR research program starting 
in January 2011, we had a whole range of new initiatives uh, that brought people together from different parts of the world who work on various aspects of rice research but also development. And so we had many of these kind of interactions already and you can really see already this kind of learning effect. So, and it can go either way. I mean, there are many things that Asia may learn from South America or vice versa, right. Africa from Asia or vice versa. So I think it's going to be a multi-directional flow of information and that's really the big potential. We can learn so much and there's so much to do for everyone in this partnership. We actually hope that uh, some countries uh, actually step forward and take on leadership for certain things because uh, we can do everything. Here is one institution, uh, it has a global mandate, it can do many things but it cannot do all things. We certainly need for even more, a more substantial partnership yeah. but also countries that can play a role step forward and yeah. take the leadership. Yeah. No, I think that's uh, one of the, the messages that, that we need to take to heart and need to make sure that, uh, that everyone, both within GRISP, within the CGIAR, within the broader agricultural research community, understand and that there's no shortage of problems. There's more than enough problems to go around that uh, being inclusive uh, and bringing in the appropriate partners to work on the appropriate problems, and matching skill sets and ma matching experience is what it's going to take to, to solve complex problems. Uh, arguing over turf and, uh, and uh, you know, who should be in charge of which program is, is a waste of time, a waste of effort. And I think that uh, the, the work of GRISP and how GRISP has come together so smoothly is just an outstanding example of of how, uh, with creativity and goodwill, uh, tremendous resources can be brought to bear on, on very strategic uh, problems that will have major impact on, on the well-being and welfare uh, of, of coming generations. It's all about people. You, know, you need good people, dedicated people. You need to find ways for them to effectively work without being disturbed and distracted from you know, what I would like to call non-productive demands on their time, often not really... Ever the diplomat. Yeah.